Christmas Mythics. We are back. Yes, it's another Wednesday evening, 6.30 p.m. UK time, there or thereabouts. My name is Ken Boyter, but you probably already know that because you have been watching Edward Tales Twitch channel or the YouTube channel, or you are part of the Facebook group. However, if you didn't know that, because you're not part of any of those, well, you kind of know it now because I've just told you. Anyway, this is Grockle Snook. He is from The Bottled Imp which is another YouTube channel that I have run with Julian. Although we've not run it for a while because we've life life has taken over. How is everybody? Hello, Sally. How are you? How are you? Yeah, I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I have my usual snooze. However, I did wake up about 6 o'clock and then I realised I had stuff to do. <laughs> yes, I had to scan in... The pictures. What are we doing this evening, though? We are playing League of Thieves. League of Thieves. There we go. That's just my screenshot. Hopefully, <laughs> Twitch will use that as the uh, as the thumb. Hello, Martha. Very tired and not good. Ah, big hugs to Martha. Big hugs to Martha. Good night. Good midnight to Lirin. Twitch forces you to watch something else if I log in early. Not impressed. Oh, yeah, they just love that. Is it an advert? It'd be worse if it was an advert. Yeah, I've noticed now they've put adverts. When I load up, when I, you know, put the type in what this is going to be called, etc., etc. And then I click create. It kind of loads up a little advert for me. Thanks. You can't. They can't get away with it, can they? Anyway, yes, we are playing League of Thieves by Sarah Crofton and W.J. Tattersdill. Great name. Illustrated by Tom Knight. Now, this is a, I think this is the third in the Osborne Adventure game books. We've already done two previous game books, which was, uh, what was the first one called? I can't remember now, but one was called Curse Breaker. I remember that one. And they were both by Simon Thudhope, or Tudhope. So now we've got some new authors in the series, which is kind of understandable because, you know, if they're doing two a year, maybe three a year, I think there's a fourth book out now in this series, then, yeah, the name's different. Yeah, Martha's put her noticed the same. Oh, I see. Sorry, I thought you were commenting about the names. Martha put it, notice them, I don't like the other channel at all, not my style. I guess, yeah, that's the problem with that, is that people go, well, I don't really like this. <laughs> However, I can kind of see it from their point of view, they're trying to promote other channels. And God forbid you could just be sitting watching nothing. You can't have that, you've got to be watching something. The clues hidden and in illustrations gimmick reminds me of Agent Arthur's Spy Adventure Puzzle Books, also by Osborne. Oh, yeah, they probably used that then. They probably thought, oh, it's a good, it fits the game book genre very well. And it does, to be fair, it does. You know, we have got various images. Just give you a quick taste. Ooh. Ooh. Various images. And they are puzzle images. So there's clues in the puzzle to help us get to the next entry. I have put, this is what actually why I was late, I was scanning them all in, so I've scanned them all in, and I have put them up into the Edra Tales Facebook group, click on the media tab, and click on the folder League of Thieves, and I've just numbered them 1 to 12, because I didn't get time to have a look exactly which, um, yeah, it says turn to 61, so I think last time I put the entry numbers by the actual, uh, you know, named them correctly. This time, I didn't have time, so I'm sorry. So, but don't worry, because I'll just hold them up and you'll be able to match them in the media file in the album on the Facebook group. So there we go. So yes, we are playing the League of Thieves. League of Thieves. Now, the other th uh, two that we've played have been very enjoyable. Hello, Alex. How are you, sir? How's things? We're just saying we're playing League of Thieves. By Sarah Crofton and W.J. Tattersdill, which I think is a fantastic name. Illustrated by Tom Knight. We've done two of these uh, in the series before. This is the third in the series. And I didn't know this. 
But remember the last two sessions we did, we played, you did a play test of my game book, To Kill a Thief, Devilish Devilish. I didn't realise that they'd got a thief as their next book. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, great. So there you go. I think my I think my cover's slightly better. <laughs> Do you? I don't know. This has got a thief on it, but this has got a goblin on it with a knife. What's not to like? My thinking actually of not putting a thief on the cover was and I'm assuming it's the same in this book, was you play a thief. And I always like the fact that you don't, you never see yourself in the game books. You know, the fighting fantasy, you never see a picture of yourself. So that's why I didn't do that. It's, you know, it's from your perspective. You're in the sewers, you come across a goblin. Just my thinking, just my ramblings, just my ramblings. So, League of Thieves, let's crack on then. So, I'm going to read the blurb on the back. Among the shadowy alleys and moonlit rooftops of Morrowstone... A mysterious enemy has kidnapped your friend. What? How dare they? And the only person who can rescue him is you. I don't know why that would be. But anyway, in this magical... Can you just call the police? Missing persons. In this magical illustrated adventure, every choice is yours. And your survival depends on the decisions you make. Who to fight? Who to trust? In a book where nothing is as it seems... Even the pictures hold secrets that must be unlocked. Bear that in mind. Sneaking, sneaky heroes have been popular since the French Lupin, Gentleman Thief. Sherlock Holmes and even James Bond after all. Yes, no, fair enough. I do appreciate that. It was just one of those things where I thought, oh, I've done a thief. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, I, you know, I, although we've played a lot of these game books... There's hundreds of game books out there, so I don't really know if someone's done a thief before where you play a thief. And then literally the ne very next game book I looked up, I was like, oh, okay, League of Thieves. <laughs> okay. So that was, you know, that was just my grumblings. But yes, Lu is it Lupin? Okay, I've not heard of that gentleman thief. There was a gentleman thief. Oh, I can't remember. Maybe it was Lupin, but uh, there was a radio series it was Gentleman Thief. No, it's not. The name wasn't Lupin. I've got the books. I've read some of the books. And he was a Gentleman Thief. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? Ace Game Books. I was waiting for you to go live, but no notification again. Oh. Twitch. Bloody Twitch. Don't worry, Jonathan. As per usual, I've just been rambling. So basically, we are just about to crack open, open the League of Thieves. Raffles, that's the guy. I knew you'd know. Yes, yes. I read a couple of his novels. I get... Oh, okay, so yeah, Martha got the notification. 19th... Okay, so Liren's talking about the 19th century fresh, French series titled Assant Lépine. Lépine. Yes, Raffles the Gentleman Thief is the one I was thinking. I think that was written, yeah, 1930s, something like that. Alex Pert, all three kids really enjoyed the Crooked Crown. Hey! Fantastic. And they keep asking to play it. We like the sound of that. Every time we finish a game, they ask for one more, one more. I know. I, we found that. We found that in playtesting. There we go. So those of you that don't know what Alex is talking about, the Crooked Crown is the card game that Kedrick Winks and myself have just had published with Cheatwell an outset, and uh, we're very happy with it. We, we, we launched it at the UK Games Expo. You didn't, you weren't at the UK Games Expo, though, were you? you you've just ordered it online, because if you were, I missed you. <laughs> yeah, that is the best feedback. Absolutely, Sally. Simple, fast, and fun. Ooh, I like that. Simple, fast, simple, yeah. <laughs> Nipple, fast, and fun. No, not that. Simple, simple. Simple, fast, and fun. Yeah, we found that. We found that. We we basically, you kind of want another game because you then start to go, oh, okay, I know kind of what I'm going to do next time. And it, because it is so quick and easy to play, you you just can play two or three in a row. No, it wasn't at the expo. I would have said hi up there. I was going to say, I thought so. 
because then I thought, oh, maybe you did, and I've just totally forgotten. <laughs> so there you go. So if you did want to get your copy, I mean, you can't ask for a better, um, what's the word? Recommendation. In the UK and Europe, cheat well. Go to cheatwell.com. That's C H E A T W E L L. And if you're in Canada or in America, go to Outset, outsetmedia.com. It should be in shops as well at some point. Oh, there you go. You ordered it from Cheatwell. Hey. Um, because they do have a sales team that do sell directly into shops. So hopefully it'll be in Waterstones and WH Smiths. Who knows? We'll find out. So there we go. So thank you for that. That's very kind of you, Alex. That is basically... I got a little bit teary-eyed, actually, because there was we demoed the game. I demoed the game non-stop, basically, at the UK Games Expo. And time after time after time, everybody seemed to have a good time. And you kind of go, wow, that's kind of what you want in a card game. When you produce something, whether it's music, whether it's, um, well, you know, food, anything, <laughs> entertainment, whether it's a book, a game book, you kind of just... If you can bring joy to people, that's kind of what it's about. So to see so many people happy going, oh, yeah, well, I had it at the beginning and then you nicked it off me and then I thought it went to you, but then it went, to, you know, it was great. 15 quid was a bargain. Yes, I know. <laughs> when they said it was going to be on sale for 15 quid, I was like, oh, OK. Well, I thought it'd be more like 20. But there you go. If I don't reopen it, just me being slow. Oh, OK. OK, if you don't respond slow strong payments no worries martha the exchange of money in return for joy <laughs> is good too yes oh don't get me wrong when the first royalty checks come in i'm not going to be down and a... <laughs> it is nice obviously because you put a lot of hard work into it um and it's nice to get joy you know return plus also monetary return as well <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah no definitely so if it comes to Outland, I will buy it faster than a bullet. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not sure, you know, I don't, that's not part of my... I'm not involved in the where it gets sold to. Um, but hopefully, if it sells well, you know, there'll more and more shops will want it and actually try and contact Cheatwell or an outset. So there we go. So, right, let's crack into League of Thieves then. Oh, League of Thieves, so... As I just read out the back of the blurb, someone, a mysterious enemy, has kidnapped your friend. And I say boo to hiss to that. Boo and hiss. So let's read the little introduction then. This is League of Thieves. Morrowstone, once the richest place in the land, this fair city on the banks of the river Lutz has fallen on hard times. Shops lie empty Roof, roofs have caved in and the streets are stalked by swindlers, rowdy gangs and thieves. One of these thieves is you. As a member of the secret society known as the League, you've sworn to steal only to help the needy. And there's no shortage of those in this town. No shortage of loot either, if you know where to look. But one night, during what should be a, a routine job, your world is turned upside down and a new enemy threatens you, the League, and even the city itself. From this point onwards, you are in control of an epic adventure. Every choice is yours, and your survival depends upon the decisions you make. There are battles to fight and picture clues to unravel as you pull off the ultimate robbery or meet a grisly end. <laughs> right now, playing a wizard thief. Oh, fantastic in Dark Souls 2, whose jester cap gives him a t plus 20%. To item discovery. Why would a Chester cap give you that? I do have a Chester cap. When I was demoing the Crooked Crown at UK Games, I wore a Chester cap because one of the little figures in it is a Chester. So, um, we pretty much know how to play this. We've done two of these before. So, let's just jump straight into it because we don't... I, uh, oh, no, hang on. Okay, yes, no, you're right. I can't just jump straight into it. When can you when can you jump straight into things? Oh, I've not got the bell. I've been a little bit disorganised. Right. Um, Jam's not here. Where's Jam? Where's Jam? 
So we start with, it says here, 12 life points. Oh, it's got it written here, 12 life points. Then do we roll? Let's have a look. Abilities. We've got three abilities. Agility, stealth and lock picking. Yeah. Before you start the game, add one point to ability of your choice. Oh, okay. So your starting level for each ability is three points. Before you start the game, add one point to the ability of your choice. At various moments in your quest, you'll gain more ability points. Sometimes you can choose which ability to upgrade. And others in the text will specify. Remember to update your local whenever it is. Okay, so what would you like? I think Jam is travelling back from Scotland. Oh, to Scotland from London via Lincoln. Oh, okay. Good to know, Jonathan. I wasn't exactly expecting an answer, but you're in the know. You are the man. You're the wise owl. Jonathan, the wise owl. Hmm... Okay, so we've got stealth, agility, and lock picking. Lock picking. Lock picking. Which would you like to add one ability to make it have four ability points? Type stealth if you want stealth, agility if if you want agility, and lock picking if you want lock picking. Martha's already gone in for stealth. That sounds like a very good idea. Although lock picking equally. I mean, they're all good. So, anybody else voting? Because at the moment, we've got a tie. You decide. Lirian also wants lock picking. Lock picking. Stealth. What would I pick? Yeah, I, put, I don't know. It's a tough one. I probably would pick lock picking. Maybe. Okay, anyone else voting? Oh, I've got a nice bit of honey tea. Okay, we're lock picking it is. So, we've got three for stealth. We've got three for agility. And we've got four for lock picking. It's all written down. Oh, I am going to have to get... Oh, no. Have I got a pencil? I've got a pencil. I've got a proper pencil. I do need to sharpen the pencil of doom. <laughs> lick pocking. Not sure this is the right book for that. <laughs> right, okay. We are going to go for lock picking. So, four, three, and three. Then, what else have we got? Do we begin with any coins? I don't think we do. Oh, oh for paupers. Okay. Right. So, here's the log book. It's very simple. We've got uh, life points 12, stealth 3, agility 3, lock picking 4, and then we've got items and we've got notes. Okay, let's kick on then. We've read out the little introduction. Entry number 1. Just pick some pockets for coin. Yeah, exactly. Got to pick a pocket or two. Stop, thief! The shout comes so suddenly that you almost let go of the rope. You tighten your grip and keep falling. Oh, to keep falling. As half a dozen guards swarm into the gallery below you, shattering the deep silence of the museum. Ho oh, ho, we're in a museum. Uh, it isn't you they're yelling at. Kit, always the fastest and most daring of your gang, was the first to reach the dusty floor. You watch in horror as the guards surround him. You can clearly see their scowling faces in the moonlight. And you know that if any of them look up, they'll spot you too, dangling just above them. There's a sharp tug on your rope. From the roof, Len, Leon, Leon signals to you frantically. Something's very wrong. There shouldn't be any guards here tonight. You need to climb back up right now before you're caught too. But down below, you can see, still see the case that holds the Jade Falcon. The treasure that brought the three of you here tonight. It's temptingly close. And the guards are distracted by Kit's frantic struggling. You have only seconds to decide what to do. We're well, straight into the first decision. To leave now. So if you'd like to leave now and join Leon on the roof. Type leave. We've been rattled out. Yeah, ratted out by an inside. Exactly. Leave. Action-packed already, I know, straight in. 
they've not messed about. I did wonder about that with mine. Like, do you do a slow burn into the adventure or do you just go straight into the action? Type leave if you want to leave. If you want to try and sneak after the guard to see where they take kit, type sneak. To take advantage of the distraction and try and steal the Jade Falcon, type steal. What would you like to do then? Leave, sneak or steal. Those are all very good choices. <laughs> if I just nick it, just nick it. So what, kit? You're, it's one for, all for one and one for all. Okay, so Martha wants to leave. Um, so I'm just getting to the Skyrim music. You probably can't hear that. Everyone else has put steel. Hello, Tex. How are you, sir? Right, so I'm going to turn the music up a little bit. It's got, all got very dramatic there. So we're going to steal. You're, you're not messing about, are you? And look, we've got a first illustration there. That's pretty cool. Look at that. That must be us dangling. Nice to be here. That's good to hear. Yes, Dover Keen. Exactly. So, right, I need to, I haven't got any spare paper. Well, hang on. Oh, I'm very disorganised tonight. Right, I'm going to write the parts down the back here. Part one. So, our first decision then. I'm going to try and steal. I'm not sure I would have done that, but let's find out. You might be right. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh, all the excitement's making me cough. 221 P Baker Street. Right then. You shout. Oh, hang on. You shut. <laughs> this gets worse. You shut out Kit's cries and Leon's agitated whispers and focus on your prize. Tonight is the only chance you'll get to steal the Jade Falcon. You swing on the rope and let go, sailing through the air and landing in a careful crouch. Under the glass, the falcon looks disappointingly small and dull. It's hard to imagine that for centuries it sat proudly in the Justice Hall, a symbol of Morrowstone and its people. All that matters now is that the League has a buyer who will pay enough for it to keep several families fed through the winter. Very noble. Behind you, Kit's struggles grow quieter. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Do you want to try and pick the lock? Type lock or pick. Or do you want to smash the case and grab the falcon? What do you want to do? Pick or smash? Okay, so we've got two for picking. Try and do the lock picking. We have got an extra point. <laughs> Tex wants to pock. I like that. Pack. <laughs> All right. I think you're taking the mickey. <laughs> Here we go. Big dramatic moment. Right. So you're going in for a bit of a po pock lick. I've still not woken up for my tonight's snooze. <laughs> Let's see if this is... I've got a horrible feeling this is all going to end in disaster straight away. But hey, that's why you play. Two, 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 three, three. I'm not sure I would have gone down this route. But maybe you're braver than me. Maybe you are braver. Maybe I would. But you're just playing to type. You're a thief after all. This is the only chance. Poor Kit. I know exactly. And, sa and save him. As, as Lee said, this is a trap. And I can feel this. If so, I told you to leave. Yes, Martha, absolutely. Carefully, you take your lockpicks from your belt and slip them into the case's keyhole. Your mind buzzes with fear, but your hands are steady. You try to remind yourself that you've picked locks like this one uh, a thousand times. Okay, it says roll one dice and add your lockpicking level. Okay, we are rolling the first dice. I believe it's seven. It's six-sided dice. They haven't. They don't do any anything fancy. Get rich, yeah, or die trying. Well, it's certainly going to be one of those things. <laughs> okay, we have a score of six. No, sorry, we've got a, a starting value of lock picking of four. We need to roll one die. That's not bad. That is a four. 
So we're on eight, which is good, I think. I'm not sure with these ones. Let's find out. If the to no, hang on. If the total is seven or higher, turn to that. If it's six or lower, turn to that. It is seven or higher. Is that a good thing? <laughs> Let's find out. I do have a bad feeling about this. Uh, you hear a tiny click and feel the lock move quickly. You grab the Jade Falcon. Oh, my God. Yeah, look, I think we've picked it. Tucking the statue into your bag, you notice the number 221 carved into the base. Make a note of this and add Jade Falcon to your logbook. Add one lock picking point. High five, everybody. My God, you just pulled off a robbery. So we're on five now. Five lock picking. Yeah, exactly. What a way to go. You guys rocked it. Okay. Uh, we're going to write Jade Falcon. Hi, my name's Falcon. Jade Falcon. Jade Falcon. We've got an item. We've got the Jade Falcon. What is it? B something favours the bold. Dave. Dave favours the bold. Falcon. Um, which is... It's got 221 written on it. Okay. Fortune. Yeah. Oh, Fortune. There it is. Fortune. <laughs> I couldn't remember what it was. Ah, uh, the, <laughs> the doping rush of gaining experience level. I know. It's crazy. They're just imaginary points. Wait, it's not even a physical thing. It's just have a point. Imaginary point. Write it on your book. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, so, so far, so good. This is going uh, uncharacteristically well for, for our adventures. The guards have overwhelmed Kit. Here we go. <laughs> and dragged him from the room. Yeah, see you later, mate. I've, I've got the jade, so good luck with what you're doing. <laughs> Their footsteps are already fading down the corridor. Remember the reference 221 carved on the falcon. Yes, I've written that down there. Thank you very much, Lirin. We do have a chance to redeem ourselves, though. It says, if you want to go after Kit, type Kit. Uh, if you want to climb back out onto the roof, type Roof. What do you want to do? Do you want to rescue Kit? We didn't like Kit. He was, he was always... Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, Alex. Alex is brutal. It's in your name, isn't it? Bruce Burkula. Yeah, Kit, mate. You'll be all right. I'll see you later. Okay, we've got three rescues. Four rescues and one roof. Yeah, what would I do here? I might just leave him. No, I probably would go and save him. The problem is, though, we go and save him. There's many guards. There is many guards. There's only one of us. We save Kit and risk losing the Falcon. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly... I was just coming to that conclusion as well. Maybe it's a reference to the old black-white gangster film noir, The Maltese Falcon. It could well be. It could well be. We shall, f we shall see. The plot thickens. Right then, so we're going to try and... We're going to go after Kit. Again, this might be a short session. No... By the way, we do have our cheating three lives. We do like to cheat. <laughs> it's not cheating, it's just bending the rules. Three, three, three. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> you step into the long corridor full of shadow cast by looming statues. Though you've spent the last week memorising a plan of the museum, this is your first time inside since you were very, very small, when the place was still open to the public and everything was kept clean and tidy. Someone told you then that these statues were beloved past rulers of Morrowstone going back to the Dragon Wars. Oh, I, I'm liking the world that they're creating already. All, the mat all that matters to you now is that you can hi you can hide behind them. Ah. The guards are moving slowly, and you can still see their lanterns down the corridor to your left. To your right, you're surprised to see a small door leading out into an alley. It wasn't unlocked before. You scouted all the doors from uh, outside. So where have these guards come from, and why have they arrived now? Okay, we've got another choice. Do you want to keep following Kit? 
and the guards type kit or do you want to slip out through the side door instead to get help type slip <laughs> what would you like to do kit we're going to keep yeah maybe keep eyes on kit that's a good idea hmm maybe you're not going to get a chance to tackle them because that would be stupid but maybe yeah you're going to follow him to see where they take him yeah or kip kipper should we call him kipper we don't know him. Kip. He's our friend, apparently. Back in a bit. No worries, Sally. See you soon. Hmm. I really do recommend just a little spoonful of honey in your tea. You know? When you're a man of my youth and vigour. No, honey's sort of more natural, isn't it, than sugar, is it? Depends the quality of the honey, I guess. I don't really know. They monkey with the food these days. Who knows? Right. So, we're going to follow Kit. Yeah, that's probably. I probably would do that. That's probably a good game. A good strategy. Keep eyes on Kit, because even if we can't rescue him now, um, we can possibly, you know, find out where they've taken him and then get some help. Go back to the thieves' den. This is like my game book. <laughs> Although with mine, there's some murders have occurred. Three, uh, two, three, two, two, three, two. All this is doing though is inspiring me to start uh, working on my game book again, which is a good thing. Two, three, two. Why can't I find that? Two, three, two. There it is. By the way, is the culture tech level Victorian steampunk? steampunk like last time or more medieval elizabethan that is a very good point i don't know it just crossed my mind as well um have they set all of these are they creating one universe because each author now will be adding to it so i'm assuming like fighting fancy even though they didn't start off with a universe particularly forgive me if i'm getting this wrong jonathan but by the X amount of book, they start to go, oh, well, actually, we'll call it, fan is it Fantasia? No, it's not that. Alancia. Um, it, it, you know, they start, re like, start creating a, new, a universe. So I wonder if they've started to do that. Um, Alancia, there it is. Yeah, I think it is Alancia. Um, which would be really cool if they did. Have we got a map? No, they've not given us a map. Yeah, we all like a good map, don't we? So I'm not 100% sure. Although, I don't know if, if you can tell from the... It might be still that steampunky world that they've created. Okay, so we're going to follow Kit and the lanterns. You follow the lanterns at a safe distance through a maze of rooms where statues and paintings sit gathering dust. Suddenly, the light ahead of you disappears around a corner. When you follow... You find yourself at a junction of three short passages, each ending in a closed door. The silence is complete and the guards are nowhere to be seen. You remember this junction from the plans you studied, but there's no way to tell which path the guards took. You stare ahead for the moment, looking for any clue. It says roll two dice three times. It says if at any point you roll a double turn straight if not turn to that way oh okay that so jonathan is that a new mechanic i think this series is written by editors who work for osborne books yes i remember you saying that that simon tudhope was an editor at the company so i wonder if sarah crofton and wj tattersdill are also editors there might be worth getting in touch jonathan know what i mean know what i mean um is what i mean i just popped to the kitchen Jonathan, very disappointed in you. Right, um, no, obviously not. Do what you want. It's a free country. Is it a new mechanic where it says roll two dice three times if at any point you roll a double, turn to this way, or if not, turn that way? I did email them but didn't get a response. Oh, bloody Osborne. See, you're the guy to write them. I mean, you're knocking them out in a good way. Um, but for other brands as well, other IP... You're the star. That's quite a niche mechanic. Yeah, I didn't mean mechanic. I, I've never seen that before where th th they are the dice are now deciding which way you're going. 
And I think that's probably good because it, it's given us a no descriptive, it's given us a guess, basically. It's okay, I've got plenty of people asking me to write game books for them. Yes, exactly. You don't need them. Just bought the book. What book did you just buy? This book here? Did you just buy this one? Great. The fifth book is announced for November already. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I know there's a fourth one already out. So that's why they, yeah, they're getting more authors involved, aren't they? League of Thieves. Yeah, it's a good book, isn't it? I'm enjoying it already. Right, here we go then. We're going to roll two dice three times. If we get a doubles, we have to turn it one way. If not, we, we turn to another page. Look at that. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or if that's a bad thing. Some of the more cruel Ian Livingstone books also left your fate purely to chance as well. Crypt of the Sorcerer being the most infamous. Oh, really? Oh, I haven't played that one. Could be a good thing. Snake's eyes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who'd have thought? What? Is this a good thing? Are we, are we going to get lucky dice this time around? Say, so if you roll a double, which we did first go... Crazy. Here we go then. Two, six, three. You take a deep breath. Push away your fears. Hang on. You take a deep breath. Push away your fears for Kit and the frustration about your ruined plans and focus on your surroundings. The faint light from the high window grows a brighter, a little brighter for just a moment as the moon slips from behind a cloud. Something silver glints on the floor in, of the middle passage. It's a guard's badge. It's a guard's badge which must have fallen as Kit was bundled along this way. But the badge looks odd. The falcon on the coat of arms is facing the wrong way. It's a fake! You're still puzzling over it as you reach out the end of the short passage and open the door. An unexpected crunching on the other side makes you freeze. Add the fake guard's badge to your logbook. Okay, Jonathan's put here. I've learned from my mistakes over the years. You shouldn't have a player's fate dependent on entirely on random dice roll. And you shouldn't hide vital information behind a dice roll either. Yeah, no, absolutely. That sounds brilliant. Yeah, I remember playing some game books. It probably might have been the Fight and Fancy ones where... Certainly the early ones where they don't give you any clue. It's like, do you want to go to the left door or the right door? And it's like, well, I don't know because I, I have no, you've given me no information about it. At least have it where you hear a faint snoring sound behind the left door. At the right door, there's a pungent cheese-like smell. Which way do you want to go? And you go, hmm, I, I don't like snoring. However, I do like pungent cheese. Let's go for the right door then at least you've got some sort of information to go on. Yeah, that's not great either. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I hadn't, also though, I hadn't thought about, yeah, don't hide information behind a die roll because if they don't, if the die doesn't come out in their favour, they're not going to get that information and then they're not going to progress, are they? So, ah, a rival guild forger thieves. Ah, oh, it could be a rival guild. We need to rescue him and we're going to play... Goblin's Revenge. Hmm. What's Goblin's Revenge? <laughs> I like the sound of that. Goblin's Revenge. That could be the sequel to my game book. Because <laughs> on this one, as we found out, we did meet this goblin and you managed to kill him. So, oh, is that what it's called? Oh, well, I can't call it that then. <laughs> it's another game book. In the oh, is that the next one? Oh, okay. Damn, they're coming up with good ideas. The most painful hair puller was Creature of Havoc, which you literally had no control of your character until you made it out of the tutorial dungeon alive. Yeah. But you know what? You can't be too critical of the early fighting fantasy books because they were creating the genre. They were putting branching narrative stories with combat system, which I don't think Jonathan will know. Jonathan's the expert on this. I don't think necessarily had been done before. If it had, it'd only be done, a, you know, in a few other game book series. So it's still an early genre at that point. Oh, Goblin's Revenge. That sounds great. Okay, so we... Uh, what do we do? Oh, yes. We've got to write down the fake guard's badge. Yes, you, yeah, you're right. Could be another guild. Fake... <clears throat> 
guards badge. So it looks like we're on the right way, and it says turn 67. So, so far, so good. It is accepted that FF added RPG mechanics for the first time. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. Um, that they were the ones that actually put a combat system in, yeah. Um, what we're we doing? 67. 67. So, so far, so good. You've not put a foot wrong. <coughs> what could possibly go wrong? Here we go. Crunch. You've opened the door into something fragile that was propped behind it. Baffled, you pick up a fragment of broken pottery. One of the museum's relics, no doubt. Oops. But what is it doing behind the door? A small label lies among the shards. Combat Jin. This powerful demon was often used to guard treasure or prisoners. This doesn't sound good. You don't get a chance to read any further before green mist swirls out of the shattered pot, gathering into a hideous laughing figure who towers over you with a giant club. Prepare to die, shouts the djinn. Okay, we're into combat. We are into combat. I thought you meant combat djinn. Yeah, no, I know. That's how it's pronounced though, isn't it? It's just got a silent D. Tunnels and Trolls. Yeah, I looked up at Tunnels and Trolls, but did that have a combat uh, mechanism added to it? Uh, and was that slightly after? Although com Tunnels and Trolls... Oh, I thought you meant combat gen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, t Tunnels and Trolls, Jonathan, did that have a combat system? Do you know? Tunnels and Trolls is a solo RPG, not a game book. Uh, there's a subtle difference, subtle difference. Okay, here we go. We're in combat. So, combat means... It's, it's quite a clever way of doing combat. Um... We have to predict how many we're going to get. Stand corrected. There we go. Subtle difference. Yes. Might have been absence in that smash bottle. Letting us see some green fairies with its potent fragrance. <laughs> Ooh, mama. Right, here we go then. So with combat, what you do is... See, as a member of the, League, of the League of Thieves, you've learned to stay in the shadows wherever possible. However, there are situations where you can't avoid a fight. So what you do is, you fight by rolling two dice, okay, um, and then the skulls are your opponent's combat points. So, if you look here, they give us combat points. So he's got four combat points. We have to defeat him in five rounds, and he will deal us two damage if we get hit. So it says here, the skulls are your combat points, the opponent's combat. The aim is to cross them all out. You must do this with a certain amount of number of rounds. One skull is one combat point. The number of rounds you have to defeat your opponent on the left, yeah. At the start of each round, you decide how strong an attack to launch against your opponent. You do this before rolling by choosing from two options. Oh, they've, they've tightened this up. It was three options last time. So, roll a seven or more, the opponent loses one combat. Roll nine or more, your opponent loses three combat. Um, once you've chosen, you roll two dice. Remember, if you chose to roll seven or more, but actually roll a ten, you still only get one point. And the more combat points you aim for, the lower, the lower your chance of success. But you only have a limited number of rounds. Yeah, we know how this works. Remember, defeat does not necessarily mean death. Every time you fail to meet, match your chosen, you must cross out one or more of your life points. So if we fail to predict what we're going to roll, we get hit by uh, whatever the damage is. In this case, it's two damage points. Obviously, if it gets to zero or they get to zero, uh, then we're dead. Okay, so... Okay, so here we go then. What do you think we're going to roll... Uh, so choose between a jab and a haymaker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, well, yeah, it doesn't say we start with any weapons. So, yeah, maybe we are just punching them. We are just punching a mystical m mist. That's, we're just going to go straight through him. Right, okay. 
He has four combat points that we need to... So we need to get rid of those four within five rounds. So what do you want to do? Do you want to uh, vote for seven or do you want to vote for nine? Type seven or nine, depending on which you think we're going to roll. Seven or more or nine or more. Seven or more is one combat point. Nine or more is three combat points. Okay, we've got one apiece so far. Let's make that decision then. Start with a jab. Okay, so that's two for the jab, one for the haymaker. Let's do it that way then. Anybody else voting? What do you think we're going to roll? We've got two dice. That's not bad, two dice. What is the average that you roll on a two dice? Is it seven? Hmm, Jonathan will know this. Lirin, I'm sure you'll know this as well. <laughs> seven. Martha's put in seven as well, so we're going to start with a little jab. Okay, so this is for one combat point. And we've not rolled very successfully, so we didn't roll that part. And what's the average that you would roll on two dice? It is seven, isn't it? Uh, you're multitasking. Multitasking, what, listening to me and drinking whiskey? Is that your multitasking? So, unfortunately, we did not do that. Don't blame the die roller. Right, so we're, good. we're down to ten. We're on ten life points. Rum. Oh, yeah, you like a bit of rum, don't you? The Kraken. Um, seven, yeah, I thought so. It's seven. Have you not learned anything? Well, that's how I just remembered. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm sure there's a game where it's two dice. Gin. We're drinking gin and defeating a gin. Maybe that's what you need to do. You needed a bottle of gin to just throw in his face. Ah, it's burning. Should we do that again then? What would you like to do? Are you going to go for a seven? Or are you going to go for a nine? You decide. Do we lose two health? Yeah, we lost two health because we didn't actually predict correctly. If we had rolled a nine plus, we would have still wounded it. Because we actually rolled above what we predicted, even though we didn't get it spot on, 7 or an 8. Oh, okay, look at this. We've got some people fighting talk here. We've got two jabs and three haymakers this time round. Okay, right, come on. <clears throat> let's, get, let's get 12, let's get 12. We can do it, come on, let's get 12. What is that? That's a 10. Bish bash bosh. Have some of that. Well done, guys. So we knocked three points off. So we've only got one more to get. So he's got one point of damage. And we have three rounds left. Smash, yeah. Start the new round of voting right now. Alex has gone for seven. Now only seven, yeah. We got in the we got in the right. Hey Jeannie, your shoelaces are untied. <laughs> yeah. Huh? The, the old black and white films. I might try and watch some of the old black and I used to Saturday mornings in the UK or in England anyway. I'm sure they used to put or maybe it was Sunday mornings, they used to put a, a black and white film on, like a, a Harold Lloyd or a Buster Keaton or a Charlie Chaplin. And I remember sort of my mum sort of watching it with me or parts of it or she was doing the ironing. And I've got such fond memories of that. I might have to start looking out for those old classic, you know, just with the fighting and the, all the, like, early comedy. OK, here we go then. So we're going for a seven. Come on, we can do it. Let's get a 12 again. Well, not that we got it last time. Right, here we go. Let's get a 12, get a 12. Bosh, that's looking good. That is four. Ah, five, six. Lots on YouTube. Ah, okay. And you've got... <laughs> yeah, no, is it, was it Ted Turner or Tex Turner? What's in that studio? Who Wasn't he a film producer? Ted Turner or was it, was it Tex Turner? Is it you? Is it you? We've got a six. Sorry about that. Right, that's embarrassing. We have, we're now down to eight. Four health points and jabs aren't working, yeah. Okay, new round, what do you want to do? We've got two rounds to get one point. What would you like to vote for? 
It's me. <laughs> yeah, not. I was going to say, you must be like 208. Uh, got Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck's uh, Roman Holiday last week for two quid. Had a delightful romantic comedy brawl where Audrey whacks a cop on the head with a guitar. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, those really classic films. I guess that there was, yeah, the golden age. Oh, I forgot to put my necklace on. Look at that. You're just getting bare flesh for tonight. I hope you can handle it. Okay, so Martha wants to go for a full-on haymaker. Leering saying, no, let's do a chair. We only need one point. So at the moment, it's one apiece. Gin is immune, immune to jabs. Exactly. Why does it always start? Why, why can't, you, can't you, just, you just talk it down? Maybe you could do a game book. Has anyone done a game book like this, Jonathan? Where you can talk your way out of combat. So if you specifically were playing, I don't know, the Persuader. <laughs> no, if you were playing a character that was, you know, that, that. Is there a game book like that where it gives you an option maybe halfway through to sort of say, look, we've, we've both had enough now. We're a little bit tired. Should we call it a day? <laughs> is there anything like that? <clears throat> okay, looks like we're going for seven again. Looks like we're going for seven again. Speechcraft skill. Yeah, exactly, in Skyrim. But I just wanted in a game book. I mean, how would that work? You'd have to work that out. Sorcery game books can be played without a single combat round if you cast the right spells. Oh, there you go. It's all about the magic. Right, here we go. We need seven or more. Okay. Okay. We're down to six. Three jabs are all failed. Right, we need one point with one round. There's no point in going nine plus, so I'm just going to make it... We're going to go for seven. It's time to bring out the big guns. <laughs> yeah, what's that? Your mum. I didn't mean that as in your mum, but as in our mum. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey! <laughs> nine. Oh, Oh, okay, people want to vote. Do you want to go nine or do you want to go... We only need to get one point, so we, there's no point in going nine. <laughs> he says after insulting your mum. No, he's Alex still wants to go big. Okay, so... He's not, he's not, having, any, he's not having it. Why a limited round? Lose after five rounds. Yeah, so the combat system in this one, each... These are the combat... This is life force, basically, the skulls. And at the moment, he's got four. He's down to one. So it does say cross them out, but I don't want to write in the book. And it says here rounds. You have to beat him in five rounds. And that differs depending on the enemy. And then that tells you the damage, how much damage. Um. So, literally, this is our last round. But it does say, remember, if you get... If you lose... You don't, de it doesn't actually mean death. It just means that it's a different outcome. So I'm, I'm going to go seven. Yeah, let's go seven. Well, we've got three votes for seven. Sorry, Alex. Here we go then. Let's get seven. We only need a seven. We're going to get a 12. Here we go. Well, I think that statistic of rolling two dice and getting seven is the average. I think that's wrong. I think Catan have let us down. I think Catan should be holding its head shamefully. So, we were very close to death there. We're on four points. We're on four points. Yeah. If you win, turn to such and such. If you lose, turn to 301. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, 301, let's see if we actually, yeah, well, let's see if we survive. It might just disappear and go, ah, go on, yeah, I kind of like you, off you go. Off you go, you little scampy thief. <laughs> right, 301. The League of Thieves has trained you well. Have they? And you dodge and weave around the gin. But it's hard to land a hit. As you grow more and more tired as the gin laughs and twists in the air. As he lunges for you again, you lose your footing. Suddenly, you find yourself... <laughs> the word suddenly. 
completely surrounded by the green mist. It stings your eyes and fills your lungs. You struggle to free, to get free, but the mist wraps tighter and tighter until you sink at last into darkness. Kids long gone by this time. A wa- hang on. Kids long gone by the time a watchman finds your lifeless body on the museum floor. <laughs> Ooh, bit harsh. Uh, um, hang on, hang on. Can anyone work out if Sarah Crofton or W.J. Tatterstill is an anagram of Sir Ian Livingston? Can anyone work that out? Yeah, the Osborn books are delightful in their way that loss can lead to new plots and not the game over screen. That is true, Lerin. However, <laughs> not that time. Lost to life already. This is brutal. Exactly. I said grab the falcon and leave. Alex did say that, yeah. Now, that was frustrating. Well, it's very close to Lara Croft. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think there's a subtle clue in there. I think we need to do more research in Livingston. He's moonlighting for other fi- other uh, fantasy series. <laughs> Imagine that. Big scandal, breaking news. Ian Livingston writing for Osborne Adventure Games. Fighting fantasy fans not happy. You're you're a bad dice. Oh, am I now, Martha? Oh, I see. Blaming me, yeah, blaming me for your decisions. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go too well. Um, although at the beginning it was good. We were doing well. Hmm. Let's pretend we won. Otherwise, we won't have that fake badge. Yes, that's exactly what. That's sh- sh- what we're gonna do. Sh- <laughs> you rolled the dice. That is a fair point. That is a very fair point. I'm gonna put death next to the entry number. However, magically, we seem to have won. And look at that. All of our health is back up to 12. Hang on. Oh, I haven't got a proper rubber. Just got a nub. Just got a nub. Doing my best. Right, okay, look at that. We're back up to 12. Amazing, amazing. I will write down the number of lives, though. We're on two now. We give ourselves three, a cheeky three. Must hit it off. Goodbye and thanks. Nice one, Tex. Thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to join us again, it is going to continue at 6.30pm UK time next Wednesday on the Edra Tales Twitch channel. It's good to see you again. We'll do part two next week. So, we did win. What are you talking about? <laughs> Death. What are you talking about? We won. Yay, we won. <laughs> 67. If you win, turn to 13. Yay, we did. You might do. Please do. Be good to see you again. No worries. No worries if you can't. But if you can, fantastic. 13, here we go then. 13. Yeah, we just beat him. The djinn vanishes in a puff of foul-smelling smoke. And you fall against a wall, exhausted but alive. Yes, we are alive. We're very much alive. Who are these people who would use a priceless artefact as a trap like that? They're more cunning and more ruthless than any guard you've met at Morrowstone. And every moment they're dragging... Oh, and every moment they're dragging Kit further away. You're about to move on when you notice that the smoke from the gin hasn't quite disappeared. In fact, it's gathering again and moves... Oh, no, and moving towards you. Before you can cry out, it surges into your lungs. But instead of choking you, it makes you feel suddenly powerful. Smoking kills. Yeah, that's what I thought. But however, with the power of the djinn on your side, you are now more effective in combat. Yes, all you have to do is just drink gin and you're away. I've often thought that. Most things are improved with alcohol. Um, In the future, you may add one to any one die roll after you've rolled once per fight. Only once per fight. Adds three life points. Yes. So we're going. I'm going to just say that we're on fifteen now. 
Because we've checked we didn't check. So we've got the power of the gin. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in the notes, I think, am I? Power of gin. They must know what they're doing when they write this. It's a kid's book for God's sake. The power of gin. Right. We've got power of gin. So uh, which equals plus one to any die roll one time per combat. Okay, see, there's not enough space to write. So that's my only criticism here so far. Strong to the finish, because we eat sand Guinness. <laughs> okay, fantastic. We've got the power. Add three life points and turn to 100. This cheating malarkey is good, isn't it? I mean, what? No? Who said that? Who's, who? How dare you accuse us of cheating? Right. At last, you reach a door that opens into a wide cobbled courtyard. The cold night air hits your face and makes you shiver. The guards are dragging Kit... To, oh, we've still got eyes on him. The guards are dragging Kit towards a gate in the far wall, with his hands bound and a gag over his mouth. They're not so far away, and if you sprint, you could catch up with them. But the moon is bright, is bright tonight, and if you try to cl cross the open square, you're sure to be spotted. So, what would you like to do then? Would you like to throw caution to the wind and follow them? Or stay back in the shadows and watch where the guards go? So, type follow if you want to follow them. Or watch if you just like to watch. Yeah, or shadows. There you go. Um, yeah. It's a bit tricky. It's probably shadows. Watch is probably the best bit. Yeah, leaving to put stay back. We've already lost one coin. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Martha. They're not. I don't think they're guards. They've got a fake badge. You know, museum guards wouldn't set up a trap like that. Welcome back, Sally. Welcome back. We um, we've lost one life already. We lost in combat. <laughs> Wasn't my fault. It was the dice. Okay, we're gonna watch from the shadows. <laughs> yeah, we're watching from the shadows. We're being a bit, little bit more cautious now. Right, here we go. Uh, 277. The last guard pauses several times to shine his lantern suspiciously towards the shadows. But you're far too good at hiding to be spotted by somebody who isn't looking closely. You can only watch helplessly as Kid is taken through the gate and disappears into the warren of side streets and alleys east of the museum. Turn to 269. 269. <laughs> it started so well. You and Dice. Sally. How dare you perpetuate this myth that I roll badly. I was rolling good. I was boom, but you nobody know, remembers that, do they? Oh, oh no, oh no. What name sounds the best for a rogue Paxton cross or body cross, broody cross? I'm not sure what a Paxton cross is. What's what's a Paxton cross? This is for your D&D, &D, isn't it? Okay, um, anybody got any ideas what, what name sounds best for a rogue? For rogue Paxton cross? Paxton sounds mysterious. Yeah, Paxton. Oh, I see. Sorry. They're the names. They're the names. You, we've got a choice. What sounds best for a rogue? Either Paxton Cross or or Broody. Broody Cross, Paxton. Hmm. Brody. It's Brody. I would go... If it's Brody... Sorry. It's, I would go for Brody. I like Brody as a name. Um, Brody Cross. I, I quite like that. Although Pax, Pax Cross. Pax, after all, I reckon means peace in Latin. Oh, does it? 
Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so two six seven. We are watching from the shadows. They've taken him through the gates. Uh, where are we? Two six seven. Oh, we've got a bit of bit of writing now. Uh, oh no, I've got that wrong. That's not right. Two seven seven two six nine. I've written down the wrong one. It didn't make sense when I got there. I'd go for yeah, Brody Cross since I'm making a new character and we and, and we start off in jail. Nice. Okay. Something swooshes past your ear and you jump back in alarm as a rope uncoils beside you. Oh, yeah, we've got our mates, haven't we? Looking up, you see Lan, Lian. Oh, and Lian's a woman. Her spiky hair silhouetted against the moon. You climb up to join her. Then she gives you a quick hug and punches you in the shoulder. I thought I'd lost both of you idiots, she says. There's a strange coach waiting around the front of the museum. It showed up when the guards did. Crawling carefully over the roof, you see the carriage lands Leon spotted. It's widely out of place in this part of town, covered in rich decorations you'd love to steal. As you watch, it slowly pulls away from the museum in the opposite direction to the road Kit's guard took. Hmm. That's got to be connected to what's going on in the museum, right? Says Lan. Leon. But we can't follow both of them. We'll have to split up, you decide. So what do you want to do then? Do you want to be the one who follows Kit and send Leon after the strange carriage? Or do you want to follow the carriage yourself? So type Kit if you want to follow Kit. Or carriage, if you want to follow the carriage. Strange carriage, okay, kits. We've got two for kits, one for the strange carriage. What's just crossed my mind, though? They could have done a double switch. They might have bundled kit into the carriage, and then the guards have just gone off that way as a decoy. However, I might be wrong. That's just crossed my mind. Um... But it doesn't ultimately matter because one of one of us is going to follow one and one's going to follow the other one. So at least <laughs> Kit Kat is um, going to be... One of us will find him. Okay, we're going to follow Kat or Kit. See what you did there, Alex? Right. Um, so if you want to follow Kit, turn to 34. Okay, we're going to 34... So far, we've not come across any of the pictures, which I spent 20 minutes scanning in. Because <laughs> I thought, oh, i better scan them in, because you know what? We'll, we'll come up against a picture, and you won't be able to see it. Typical, typical. From your bird's eye view, it doesn't take long to spot Kit again. Uh -huh. Now being dragged past boarded up shops. Oh, OK, so he's not in the cart. That's good. And ramshackled houses. This used to be the heart of Morrowstone home to its museums and galleries but tough times have left the city worn and unfriendly a perfect playground for thieves thanks to the training of Dal Farron the league's leader you know every cobble of every street it's obvious that the guards can only be heading in one direction the Mallows Bridge and you can get there faster I think what I'm going to do I'm going to write down in my notes it's probably a good idea to write down the, the name of our leader. Um, so, Dal Farron. Just feels like we may need to know that. I might be wrong. Okay. So, if, if we game over before reaching an illustration, we get three extra coins so we can appreciate the effort. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, Tom Knight has gone to all this trouble doing the illustrations and then we die before we even get to them. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So that's good. So that it looks like they're going in one direction, the Mallows Bridge. And you can get there faster. Head for the Baker's Bell Tower. Le I thought she was going to the other one. Leon suggests. You'll have a... Oh, unless we're um, split up, yeah. You'll have a clear line of sight. Good luck. She springs away following the route of the carriage. Okay. So head for the Baker's Bell ta Tower. Look at the picture. Hey, no, we're doing a picture. We're doing a picture. We're doing a picture. Look at the picture on the next page. You start from the museum building with its skylight and many gargoyles. You must make your way to the bridge and stop when you reach the Baker's Bell Tower. As you jump from roof to roof, you must never jump onto a roof with a hole in it. Count the number of chimneys you pass, then multiply that number by the number of crows at your destination. <laughs> Doesn't sound complicated at all. Right, okay. When you found a number, turn to... Right, so you are needing to look at... If you go to the Edra Tales, if you can, if you can look at the, the Edra Tales Facebook group, Click on the media tab, and in there I have num I've um, scanned in every single picture and put them up into a folder called League of Thieves. Okay, so as coincidentally I've just numbered them one to twelve. So weirdly enough, though this is number one. So if you look at picture number one, that is what we're looking for. So have a look. See if you can decipher it, because it says here, okay, you start from the museum building with its skylark and many gargoyles. Okay, where the hell is that? <laughs> museum building? That's good. I can't even see where the museum building is. Oh, there it is. Right. Ah. Okay, so it looks like it's that one there. Odd for me, the photos aren't showing up. Are you sure you uploaded them? Oh, okay. Hmm, right, bear with me, because I'll just go to my computer, and I'll see if it's uploaded correctly. It did look like it had uploaded correctly, so bear with me. Yeah, you're, you're right, Martha. I hadn't clicked post. There we go. It should be there now. If you refresh the page, it should be there. Can't see them either. Yeah, sorry. I'd uploaded them, but then I still had to say post. So I've just posted them now. Refresh your browser. Refresh your bowsers. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. Not in public, anyway. Got them. Ha ha. Yeah, you were very tired. I was. Well, I was sort of rushing as well because I sort of started scanning them about five past six. And I was like, am I going to get this done in time? I've just woken up. I have no idea what's going on. So, but because I'm amazing, they're there. Is this flight magic? So, yeah, if you look for that one, it should say number one. And it's a town square. That is the building with all the gargoyles. So that is the starting point. And then it says... Um, let's have a look. You must make your way to the bridge. So from the skylight and the many gargoyles... Oh, is that the one, though? There's many gargoyles, but is there a skylight on it? Ah, maybe it's not that. Oh no, okay, my bad. It is that, that's the whole building. So that's the building there, yeah. So we're starting here. So I was right. Can you show that again, please? Yeah. So it's this one here. It should be picture number one. It's basically rooftops on a big square. And we're starting here. This is one building. Looks like eight crows at Bell Tower, top right. Okay, so yeah, let's have a look then. 
You must make your way to the bridge and stop when you reach the Baker Bell, Baker's Bell Tower. As you jump from roof to roof, you must never jump onto a roof with a hole in it. Count the number of chimneys you pass, then multiply that number by the number of crows at your destination. So you're saying eight crows, but how many chimneys did you pass? This is a bit devilish, this one. Right, so... Um, yeah, so you can't go that way. So I'm going to go... Can you jump from there? Yeah, there. So how many chimneys? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh no, can't get there. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I make it 14, but I might be wrong, obviously. 14, and there's what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's going to be a huge number. Ah, oh, Martha also got 14. Alex got 13. I count them. Uh, yeah, from the gargoyles. Yeah. Are we missing something in the fold in the middle? Yeah, I think you guys are. I've just realised that. Because there's, yeah, there's a chimney there. <laughs> I think when they design these, they need to leave a re any clue. They they should leave the gutters completely clear of anything that you need to solve the puzzle. Because yeah, you, if you put thirteen, there's that one right in the fold. Oh, it got me right in the fold. Yeah, fourteen. So, what's fourteen times eight? Anybody know that? Is it multiply? That's a big number, though. That can't be right. Count the number, then multiply the number by the number because your destination. What's 14 times? I'm thinking of Brax. Oh, Braxton for my rogue. The name means badger. I like Braxton as well. That's good. Oh, OK. It's not too big a number. I thought we were into the thousands there, but then my maths is rubbish. Oh, although... Oh, Jonathan, too much rum. Too much rum. <laughs> Look at you. Well done. Okay, so that's two people confirmed. It's 112. Let's go to 112. <laughs> Jonathan's been at the source. Right, here we go. I was going to have a beer tonight, but because I woke up and I was a bit groggy, I thought I'd... But I, I, f I fancy a beer now. I do fancy... I've got, I've got a... Uh, I've got, I do have a hobgoblin. I do have a hobgoblin pale ale. I'll have that next week. You scan the rooftops. It looks like we're right. Go get one, yeah. I'll have it next week, actually. You scan the rooftops silhouetted against the starry sky. Many of the roofs here are badly damaged, but if you head north and loop back, there you go, you can make it all the way to the tower by the bridge. You set off at a sprint, and just for a moment, your worries about Kit give way to the familiar excitement of racing unseen above the streets in your city. All uh, alone up here, darting between shadows and moonlight, you feel free. Add one ability point of your choice. There you go. Does anybody else like the name Braxton? I do like the name Braxton. It has got a... It's easy to say, which I always like, plus... It has got a little bit of an oldie worldy feel to it. Like a sparrow in the wind. Exactly. So what would you like to add it to? We have so far, we've got three stealth, three agility, and we've got five lock picking. What are we going to do? Sneak. So Lirian wants sneak. Yeah, we role play our skill gains. Yeah, Braxton just reminds me of Tony Braxton. Who's Tony Braxton? Is that like a, an actress or an MP? Sneak. Yeah, Martha also wants Sneak. Braxton is a given name of English origin, meaning badger, as well as Brooks. Oh, OK. Brock's Town. Braxton origins. Yeah, OK. There you go. Well, again, it's got an old connotation to it. Yeah, which is fantastic. Badger. Badger. He could be... Is he a badger catcher? No, he's a rogue. 
Unbreak My Heart. Oh, she's a singer. She a singer. Oh, 90s singer with a oh, magnetic voice. Oh, OK. Anyone remember Wendy James? Hello, Transmission Vamp. Um, but enough about that. What are we doing then? We're going to add it to Sneak. That looks like the popular vote. Let's add it to Sneak or Stealth. Let's add it to Stealth because we don't have a Sneak, but I know what you mean. Yeah, there we go, Sneak. OK, so <laughs> look at that. The Baker's Bell Tower is perfect lookout spot, and you watch unseen as the guards push and shove Kit, boo and hiss, towards the Mallows Bridge, just as you suspected. You slip down from your hiding place and creep carefully after them. All oh, my messages being checked by moderators, so controversial. Really? <laughs> Which one? What, the one that's that you've not that's not been posted yet? <laughs> okay. What would you like to do? Oh, hello. I guess so, right. It says here, oh, if you were hit by a blowpipe dart earlier, which we weren't. Oh, God, if you hit by a blow dart, maybe the poison takes a while to come into effect. Then X amount of entries later, then it kicks in. That's quite a nice little touch. If not, turn to 354. 354. We were not hit by a blow dart yeah that's right Martha we weren't hit by a blow dart 354 354 here we go 354 by the time you reach the bridge the guards are build bundling kit into a, wain a waiting cart a jumble of crates and ropes provides perfect cover for you as you watch. You crouch in the shadows, hoping for the chance to mount a rescue or to distract the guards enough for Kit to get away. Get this over here. This, get, this, get this over the little brute's head, you hear one say. That'll teach the lousy roof rat, growls another. I don't see why we can't just bung him in the river. The boss says to leave him alive. You clench your fists until your knuckles turn pale. City guards don't talk like this. <laughs> they're, they're more refined. They do pass the... Uh... <laughs> Hit him in the head with a truncheon, will you? There's a dear fellow. OK, so you risk looking out from your hiding place. The guards seem wary of Kit. Keep him at arm's length, even though he's tied up and his head is covered by a cloth sack. He hasn't made this easy for them. Good work, Kit. The captain stays well back, watching the others and leaning against the very barrel you're hiding behind. Something jiggles in his pocket. Oh, oh here we go. So, do you want to try picking the pocket's guards? I'll start that sentence again. Yeah, Alex has gone, I'll pick it. I don't even, I don't even need a choice. So, yeah, do you want to try picking the guard's pocket or not? Type pick if you want to. Yeah, pick it. You've got this so tempting. You're a thief. What else are you going to do? It's in your nature. It's in your blood. But does anyone else want to pick it? Anyone else voting? you got to pick a pocket or two. Oh, such a good film, isn't it? It's such a great musical. Pick it. Okay, we are going to pick the lock or at least um, have a go. One, three, five. The captain calls to the others to get a move on. Get a move on, you horrible lot. You take your chance and reach out from between the crates. Roll one die and add your lockpicking level. So we're on five lockpicking. Yeah, how do you like those bananas? Five lockpicking. And then we're adding roll one die. Here we go. Come on, I've been rolling great all evening. Shh, don't you say a word. Here we go. We're going to get a six. Going to get a six. Here we go. Pick it, pick it, pick it. Look at that. Three. Bosh. Can't say better than that. Well, you, I, I could have done. But anyway, we've got eight, which I think is enough because it says if the total is seven or higher. So, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't worked out yet whether high is good. It was good last time for us, but I don't know if they mix it up a bit. Two, five, five. Here we go. The 
The guard... Oh, hello. The guard notices nothing as you slip your hand into his pocket and pull out a single gold coin. Yes. It's not a lot, but it's quite satisfying to steal from one of these men. Add one lick, lick pocking point. Why can I not say that? We've got another ability point. We're on six. We're on six for lock picking. Look at us. Um, yeah, lock picking. That's, yeah. Um, what do you think of the name Braxton Craft or Braxton G Godwin? I'm stuck on surname for I like Braxton Godwin. That has more of a sort of medieval fantasy type feel to it. Godwin is, is an old English name, as far as I'm aware. Six, nice. Yeah, we're on six points for lock picking. Um, two, five, five. No, done that already. The guard stride away and the, car, uh, and the cart with kit in it sets off across the bridge. This is your only chance. You break cover and run after him. Add a gold coin to your logbook and then turn to 154. Okay, we've got a gold coin. I'm going to put a little money bit down. So I'm going to put a little gold section down. So just to keep track of the gold. Which I would have thought on the logbook. I know maybe they keep them in the same in each uh, game book. I think they do, apart from the agility and stuff like that, the actual uh, abilities. But it would be nice. I've put a little gold there. Can you see that? It would be nice because you're a thief. You kind of, you know, it should be treasures. You're after that sort of stuff. One five four. Getting serious now, right? One five four. The Mallows Bridge is the oldest in Murrowstone, wide, flat, and crumbling, and the drivers must go slowly. You've almost caught up with the cart when the driver looks back and sees you. He seems surprised at first, but then his mouth twists into a mocking smile. He raises something to his lips, and a high, shrill whistles a uh, whistle splits the air. Almost at once, you feel the whole bridge shudder. The rushing of the river Lutz below becomes thunderous. The waves rise impossibly high to, on, to either side of you. Then a huge shape crawls over the edge of the bridge and lands heavily on broken cobbles between you and the cart. What is going on? The driver cracks his whip, racing away at reckless speed. Somehow, his whistle has managed to raise one of the bridge guardians, the terrifying creature that protects Morrowstone against attack in times of war. It's broad-backed, hog-headed. Oh, it's broad-backed, hog-headed, and its long claws click over the surface of the bridge. All the rage is in its red eyes is focused on you. <laughs> yeah, dang it. So we've got to fight a bridge. Oh, it's quite, a, it's quite a powerful bridge guardian. Right. We've got five rounds to do it. We'll quickly do this and then we'll wrap the session up. We've got... It, it gives three damage each time. Um, <laughs> it says here at the end, if you are still alive after the final round, turn to 287. Right. So... It has one, two, three, four, five, six life points. And we've got five rounds to do it. So at some point we do need to do the Haymaker. Nine plus. So what would you want to do then? Do you think we're going to roll a seven? I don't want any comments about my rolling. <laughs> are we going for seven or are we going to go for nine? Martha's straight in there with a nine. No messing about. Okay, Sally's going for seven. So seven is one point of damage. Nine will be three points of damage if we win. Lirian wants to open with a haymaker. So does Alex. Uh, we can't let Kit die like that to those rivals. Yeah, absolutely. Go big or go home. Well, we'll find out. Okay, we're going to go for nine. I'm going to kiss, kiss the sixes. Here we go then, we're going to get a 12. Come on, we're going to get a 12. 
Oh, I thought that was a five. I keep rolling six with two dice. Looks like we're going home. Uh, what did I say? No, right, we are on 15, though. So, 12. We are on 12. What do you want to go for now? That's once. We've got four rounds to go. <laughs> New dice, please. I haven't got any. Oh, no, I have. Do, should we swap to the new dice? Should we get old talisman? Let's go talisman. Come on. We're going talisman. Here we go. We're going talisman. Okay. Do you want to go nine again then? Are we going nine again? Okay. Let's go nine. Martha wants nine as well. Right. Here we go. Let's get double six. Nine. If you roll an eight, we use our power surge. It's only two and nine. Oh, yeah, we've got a power surge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. We've got the power of the gin. Power of the gin. Right, here we go then. Let's get let's get a 12. We can get a 12. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. Boom. You could not make that up. There was no special, special effects involved with that oh look my music stopped that's 10 hours <laughs> it's 10 hours worth of skyrim god i've actually played it for 10 hours not now obviously right yes yeah, so all about the talisman dice wow so one two three it is on three life points we have three rounds to go what do we want to do? We pick up a bridge gargoyle it knocked over and raise it to the bridge and then throw it back in its face with a loud thud. Okay, we're going for nine. Does everybody else want to go for nine? Nine for the win, yeah. If we get a nine or a plus, plus nine, he dead. Okay, we're going for it. Come on. Can this happen again? Two sixes. Oh, I did this. Maybe I'm bonding with the dice first. Maybe that's what it is. Come on. Ah, coffee. No, right, here we go. What was that advert? That, was it Nest Cafe or something? They went, he went to try and pull a woman. Right, just just show her your coffee beans and she's all over you. Right, okay, no, let's move on. Right, nine, let's get a nine. Whoa, we got an 11. We almost did it again. Goodbye, Bridge Guardian. What a way to end the session. Take that. Bosh. Exactly. Smash, boom, bish, bash, bosh. We did survive, my friend. 287. Right, let's just find out the little rounding up bit. The little conclusion to our battle. 287. You land a lucky blow, a lucky blow, a lucky blow. You land a lucky blow and the guardian steps backwards, off balance for a moment. This is your chance to escape. But the options out here on the bridge are limited. So what would you like to do then? Do you want to rush towards the guardian and try to jump past it or leap into the river? Type rush if you want to rush towards it and jump past it or leap into the river, type leap. Oh, I didn't realise we're carrying on. Right, we'll just quickly do this bit then. Want to jump? Somebody wants. To, oh, Alex wants to rush. Martha wants to jump. Sally wants to rush. Anyone else voting? It's quite a tricky decision, that actually. Go cinematic, leap into the river. Yeah, and that'd be in slow motion, wouldn't it? It'd be. And then, as as it, as he lands in, cut to underwater, and you see him just land in and then swim back up to the top. The perfect cliffhanger. Yeah, can we even swim? We don't know. We don't we not been told that? <laughs> yeah. Your hero goes splash. I just remember I can't swim. I can't help. Anyone? Okay, so we got rush, rush. We don't tend to do well in water, that is true. But I've got jump. Jump. Okay, so I meant rush. Oh okay. 
rush. Is it the river guardian after all? Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, that is true. Okay, so Martha's turned her vote into a rush, which means we are going to rush. Okay. And we don't tend to do well in water, so yeah. P probably rushing. I like the jumping because it is more cinematic, but I think the rushing may be our best bet. I don't know. Let's try to find out. 314. And we're going to leave it there. We are going to leave it there. Cruel, I know. But I've got to have a cliffhammer. Hammer. I've got to have a cliffhammer for next week. <laughs> Cue credits, guitar theater. It's all slightly wonky. 80s action adventure. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So, did we make it? Did we make it? Um, I'll make a little note. Past Guardian? Question mark. Whew. Look at that. Oh, my dice tower's fallen over. I'm just writing which one we need to start on. <laughs> Look at that. Look at all that. Hey! Alex is, oh, look at the emojis. You've got cracking emojis. Oof, I'd see a doctor about that, actually, to be honest. Now that I've said it out loud. Fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. It's good fun. These are a very good, solid uh, game book series, aren't they? They're very well written. They're very well thought out. The picture clues are great fun. Um, yeah, and the entries are snappy. I'm going to try and make my entries a bit more snappier, although... That's not my style of writing, but I'm going to try and make him a little bit more snappier with my game book. I am going to... Worth staying up to on Thursday mornings. Oh, that's very kind of you, Lee Rin, and we always appreciate you staying up. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm writing my game book, which I'm going to be kickstarting in October. And if you did miss... If you're watching this and you didn't see it live... It is up on the Edge Tales Twitch channel and also on the Edge Tales YouTube channel. I did put it up there. So if you just want to have a look at it um, to see if, you know, that might be something you want to back. Um, it, it is also, coincidentally, you are playing a thief as well. It is happily a different story, so that's good. Um, it, you know, because that'd be horrible, wouldn't it? You come up with this whole idea and you're halfway writing for a game book and then someone releases the same story. You'd be like, oh, brilliant. Um... So I, uh, yeah, so it's interesting. So my, yeah, I'm going to try and keep my entries a bit bit tighter, I think. But it's my first game book. So, you know, you live and learn. Gokka's not making me sneeze. He's up to his old tricks, isn't he? He's up to his old tricks. Um, so I've written 30 entries and I've planned out, I think, 200 entries. I've actually planned it on the flow chart. So that is my next thing that I'm going to be trying to do is to finish the game book and... I'm going to be doing the illustrations myself because Rich is really, really busy. He can't do them, unfortunately, because I would have loved him to have done them. I, I did do this cover. Um, obviously, the proper book's not going to have free sample written over it. Um, and I will actually put this up on the Edra Tales when I get time, but I will let you know when that happens. Um, so if you did want to play it yourself, you can go through it. Um, what else was I going to say? Yes, so I'm going to be doing the black and white illustrations inside and what I've decided to do is do them as lino prints. I have access to a lino press and, and lino and tools, so an ink. So I'm going to do them probably 20 or 30 illustrations that will actually be a lino print. And then I thought, well, actually, I could sell off the prints. You know, I could just do a limited edition of each print and then just sell them off. If anybody wants a print, put them nicely framed up on their wall. That'd be cool. Great stream. Hopefully catch you next time, depending on the Twitch uh, yeah, notifications. Yes, thank you so much for everybody watching. Really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. Hopefully you've had fun. So thank you, Sally. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Lirin. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Tex, who popped up in earlier, which was fantastic. And anyone else. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, anyone else that watched that didn't comment. If you did want to comment in the future... You do need to actually click the follow button of the channel. That's just the rules on Twitch. So if you do want to comment on any Twitch channels, you need to follow that channel. 
And if you do want to get notified exactly when I go live, it's a bit glitchy. On the whole, it works, though, I think. Then click the notification button as well. Thanks, Sally. Yes, nice one, everybody. Ah, will there be a physical board cuts like medieval manuscripts? Oh, there will be physical board cuts like medieval manuscripts. Yes. We'll have to pick that up next time. Nice one, guys. And the next live stream is this Friday, 7 p.m. UK time, where I'll be playing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt on the Xbox, on the old Xbox One. So join me then if you can. If not, I will see you soon. Take care, everybody. And remember, may the magic of stealing be with you always.